Hello viewers, welcome to this video. I wanted to share the changes that I made to the Vagrant provisioning scripts to make it easier for you guys to deploy Metal LB. Right, so if I show you my uh, Just Made Open Source channel, and you, if you search for Metal LB, you will find lots of videos about Metal LB. So I did uh, videos four years ago, three years ago, and the one that's done recently was about a year ago. So Cube 33, 33.1, 33.2. Uh, I think probably 33 and 33.1 might be outdated. So 33.2 um, is still relevant. So that's the thing. If you want to learn about Metal LB and how I deploy it and how you can use it, uh, watch this video, Cube 33.2. But the point of this video is to make it easier for those of you who are using my Vagrant provisioning scripts to deploy Kubernetes cluster, right? So, okay, so you're checking out my Vagrant provisioning scripts and you deploy the Kubernetes cluster. You know what Metal LB is, but you don't want to uh, go through this video or run a series of steps uh, every time you deploy a Kubernetes cluster. If it's a necessity for you to have a load balancing solution in your Kubernetes cluster, every time you spin up a Kubernetes cluster for your testing, this will save some time. So I wanted to make it a little bit easier. So I have reduced the number of steps required to deploy Metal LB. So in my previous video, I did the same thing for dynamic NFS volume provisioning. And now, because those are the two things that I do personally, I have a lot of scripts that makes my life easier. So once I deploy the Kubernetes cluster using Vagrant provisioning or LXD environment, what I normally do is most of the deployments that I test require persistent volumes, load balancing solution. Um, so I don't run all those uh, individual commands one by one to get those things set up in my cluster. So I've got a separate script and I have modified the script so that I've removed all the complexities. So it's gonna be easier for you just to run one or two commands to get these things set up. So those are the two things, Metal LB for load balancing and dynamic NFS volume provisioning uh, are the two ones I personally needed every time I deploy a Kubernetes cluster, or at least most of the time uh, I was using the Kubernetes cluster. So I wanna make it a bit easier for you guys, right? So in my Kubernetes repository, if I go to the pull request, so it's still in the pull request stage because I want to show the difference, what I what, what the changes that I've made. But by the time you watch this video, I would have already merged this to the master branch. So just make sure to check out the latest uh, master branch and then you should be good to go. So Metal LB manifest, so that's the pull request. And if you look at the files changed, you have the readme, which I always wanted to have a readme file under the Vagrant provisioning, but now I've finally got a chance to do that. And then we have the miscellaneous directory, which you probably know from my previous video. And now I've got additional subdirectory, Metal LB, and three manifests. So the first one is the Metal LB. Uh, the, this manifest deploys all the custom resource definitions. And then we run this manifest, Metal LB config, which will create the IP address configurations and things like that, which I will show you in a minute. And the last manifest is just uh, a simple nginx deployment and a service just to make sure that your metal lb deployment has gone through uh, well it's just a quick way of testing if it's uh, if the metal lb deployment that you deployed in your cluster is working okay so just a quick testing all right let me show you in my visual studio code and i've checked out the metal lb deployment uh, branch and this is the branch that i'm going to merge to the master branch and under vagrant provisioning these are the usual stuffs and readme is the new item. So if I show the uh, preview of readme, so it's just, you know, the usual thing, you git clone my Kubernetes repository, cd to Vagrant provisioning, you do Vagrant up if you're using VirtualBox or if you're using KVM libvirt, you pass in minus minus provider libvirt option. And then on your local host, you create the cube directory, you copy these things. You, you probably, most of you might have uh, watched me doing these things every time I create the video, right? Um, so you might be having your own scripts or you, I don't know, you watch my video and copy the script and see what I'm doing. So now it's all in the readme file. All you have to do is go in here. Uh, if you want to copy the stuff, copy it from here and then vagrant destroy command, deploying the add-ons. So these are the two ones. This is the one that I did uh, last week. 
to deploy a uh, dynamic NFS volume provisioning. So all you have to do is CD to Kubernetes, vagrant provisioning, miscellaneous. And if I show you on the left, so now we have Metal LB as well as the NFS subdirect external provisioner. And this gives you, which I talked about in my previous video, you just run the uh, script and create the manifest and uh, create this manifest just to find out if it's actually working, if the uh, dynamic volume provisioning is actually working. And similarly for Metal LB load balancing, I have included three manifests. So you deploy the first manifest. And the thing is, this will create kubectl create minus f01 underscore metal lb dot yaml. So that will create a lot of um, custom resource definitions. So once that's deployed, you have to wait for a few seconds, probably wait for like 10 seconds or so, because you need to wait for the pods to come up before you run the second manifest, which creates the actual configuration. And then finally, you create this file, which creates an Nginx deployment and exposes the service as a load balancer. And so you can know whether the Metal LB deployment has worked successfully if you can see the, uh, the, the Nginx service getting an IP address for the load balancer. And then you delete that manifest that will delete the Nginx deployment and the, uh, the service. Okay, so while uh, I just want to go through these uh, manifests, but before that, I wanted to bring up the cluster because it will take like three or four minutes. So um, we can talk about this while the cluster is coming up. So I'll go to my terminal and I'm going to log into my Linux workstation. So I'm recording this video on the MacBook. I've logged into my Linux workstation, which is Ubuntu 22.04. So I've logged into that. Everything I'm doing is in that Ubuntu 22.04 Linux workstation, right? So I'm going to cd to the repos directory. I don't have anything. I'm going to git clone Kubernetes repository, but I'm going to clone the metal LB deployment branch. That's the metal LB deployment. If I can spell it correctly. cd to Kubernetes and then to Vagrant provisioning. So you have the miscellaneous directory. If I take a look, yes, you have the metal LB. Just making sure I'm on the right branch. Okay, let's do vagrant up minus minus provider lib build. And let's give it like a few minutes. And while it's doing that, let's go back to the uh, terminal and see what uh, changes we've done. Okay, so metal LB. And this manifest here, the, the primary manifest, it's all taken from the Metal LB. So I, I've included the link here. For some reason, if it stops working, um, I would advise you to go to the Metal LB website. Metal LB, if I search for Metal LB, going to the installation. And all I did was copy this manifest here. Okay, so that, that's the manifest that I did. And that's all in here and I haven't changed anything so that's there and it will deploy a lots of custom resource definitions and once that's done we will be doing this one here which is just a couple of resources so one is the IP address pool and if you see here the IP address is the, the IP address range that I'm specifying is 172.16.16.230 to 250 so that's about 20 IP addresses and I've chosen this range because it has to be in the same range as of your Kubernetes cluster. So if you know my vagrant provisioning scripts, uh, bootstrap script, not sorry, it's in the vagrant file. What I'm doing is I'm using 172.16.16.100 for the master and 172.16.16.101 and 102 for the worker 1 and the worker 2 nodes. So my Kubernetes cluster is in the 172.16.16.0 slash 24 uh, network. So that's why I've specified the IP address range to be in the same range uh, of my Kubernetes cluster. And I'm picking up just the last few. If you want, you can change this to last 10, or if you need more load balancing IP addresses, then you can increase this range to 220 or 210. So you will get like 30 or 40 load balancing so it's just your, you know, your home lab. I don't, I don't think you'll be needing more than like ten uh, range. But just in case, um, I've specified two thirty to two fifty, so that you get twenty uh, IP addresses. And then you will also need to deploy the L two advertisement uh, customer resource. So that's the one that advertises that we have this address pool. 
and let's take a look at the test manifest here that I created. So this is just a simple Nginx deployment, nothing fancy. It uses the Nginx latest image uh, and exposes the container port 80. And we have the service here. And the important thing to note here is the type is load balancer. So once the cluster is up and once we deploy these two manifests, we are going to quickly create this manifest and see if we can access the service. So that will conclude the testing and you're good to go. You can start using Metal LB in your, uh, in your cluster. Okay, so back in here, it's doing KWorker 2 at the moment. Let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, so the command completed and let's do our usual stuff. Make there dot cube and SCP, the etc kubernetes admin dot conf. Yes, the password is cube admin. There we go. And if I do kubectl cluster info, we have our cluster running. kubectl get nodes. All the nodes are in the ready state. Version 1.29.1, container d1.6.27, all good. kubectl get pods dash a on all the namespaces and that's looking good no restarts all of them are in the running state so we are good to go so now we are in the vagrant provisioning directory so you've created your cluster the next step is to go into metal lb and we have these three manifests so i'm going to create the first one now oh one metal lb so that is creating a lot of resources and a lot of custom resources specifically and it's all being deployed in the metal lb system namespace and we should give it a few seconds so that you know all the uh, resources services everything is up and running so if i do kubectl minus n metal lb system get all okay so it's the speaker Controller is a daemon, uh, sorry, a deployment and speaker is a daemon set. So that's why you see it running on all the three Kubernetes nodes. Okay, so those are not in the ready state. If I do that again, so now it's really good. So all of all the parts are actually running. Okay, so now we are good to run the second manifest, kubectl create minus f. Okay, as I said, the second manifest just has two resources, IP address pool and L2 advertisement. So that's cool. Okay, so now we are good to test uh, the Metal LB by creating this manifest. Let's do that. kubectl create dash F03 test load balancer. So you can see it has created a deployment and a service. So if I go kubectl get all. The Nginx pod is getting created, but if you look at the service here, the service is of type load balancer, and I can already see that it's working. So it has picked up the IP address from the range that we specified in the IP address pool. So we specified the range from 230 to 250. So it has created, uh, it has picked up the first IP address in that range and assigned it as the load balancer IP to our service. Okay, so if I do kubectl get all again, just to make sure that the pod is running. Yes, the pod is running. So now we should be able to reach the Nginx pod by this IP address. Let's copy that and do a curl. Cool, so there we go. So we have our Nginx welcome page, which means everything has worked fine. Let's delete that, kubectl delete. Deploy service nginx that will deploy the sorry that will delete the deployment and the service or we can do kubectl delete dash f and that will do the same kubectl get all so that's gone and I'm going to do go to the top level vagrant provisioning directory and do vagrant destroy dash f okay. So that concludes this video. By the time you watch this video, I would have already merged the Metal, De Metal LP deployment branch to the master branch. So that is it for this video. I will see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.